Well, it, it was it was well intended for my PhD work, but mm -hmm. I haven't done enough PhD work to be honest with you in a while. So, uh, we'll get... <laughs> okay. um, so do you want to just fire up? Yeah, let's do it. Let's All right. Start. So, um, where we are? Um, so uh, we we this group and I really appreciate it has approved five policies from start to finish, um, including uh, the last one, which was how to handle the proceeds of the bond sale, and then we did all the financial ones based on our federal audit. So that's really good. And what I've done since our last meeting is um, I went through just to make see where we were on the 1819 legislative policy review. Mm -hmm. um, and we were great. I think we finished all of 1819 and we've done some of 1920. So what I'm proposed, what the, so at the last meeting, we put out a, a kind of a, an approach where we take two policies with minor revisions and then one substantive policy and work through those. So, and this comes from the 2019-2020 review. Um, Obviously, the 2021 will be happening in the fall or late fall. So we're we're doing we're a little bit behind, but not too bad. Um, 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 so the um, first one that I brought forward for today is IHCD, which is a dual enrollment policy. So this is a policy that um, since I've been superintendent, we have developed and reviewed. So it's not a it's not it, this is just minor revisions to this one. Mm -hmm. So the revisions required in the 1920 legislative review or just update. And one of these we were actually, Andrew, we were ahead of the curve because we decided um, that we didn't want to have this for uh, 11th to 12th graders. We took all grade requirements off. Oh, and that's one of the revisions was to open this up to 10th graders, but we opened this up to any student. Hmm. So we were already uh, met that change because we eliminated the requirement of 11th and 12th graders in our policy, feeling that if a student was able to and could and could figure it out, why would we limit it? So that one, we were all set. The other changes are, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's basically everywhere we're now, and, and Kareen LaJoy and everybody has taught me, we're now school counselors, we're not guidance counselors. Yeah, I noticed that. I saw that and I was like, oh. It's a good, yeah. yeah. And that's, um, so this, this guidance counselors actually advocated that change with a minimum standard. So I think the minimum standards now refer to school counselors versus guidance. And anytime we get a chance, we update. So that term, so that would be updated in this policy. Okay. And the only other nuance is at the end, it talks about a career credential. Um, the last number 10 in bold, it says that, that we have to support. And so that's a, a school offering a career uh, credential is a pretty new concept out, uh, outside of the technical centers. Mm -hmm. like Concord Regional Technical Centers offer career credentials all the time. So, so yeah. we do have the ability, for example, uh, one of the things that I always wanted to do because we spent a lot of time on it was entrepreneurship. Um, yeah. Right. So we did an E-series years ago in my beginning and we had a wonderful, uh, we did a shark tank for kids and the foundation supported that. And, and one of my dreams was to offer like a entrepreneur credential. If you took small business, if you took technical writing, if you took a sequence of courses mm -hmm. that supported entrepreneurship or small business, you could actually get a, 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 a notice on your transcript that you've accomplished that. Well, there's Seth. No, oh, did he pop in? Hey, he just texted me and I sent him the link. So um, that's where that's coming from. Okay. So what, did, uh, what, did, what would that, I mean, how do you really take that forward though? And is it, does it apply to college or? It, I don't know, like, what does it, that mean? If we put it on a transcript, it's a, it's an asset, right? It, okay. it, it, it's something you can talk about in your experience. Um, and we haven't, um, just because of and, and just capacity issues, uh, we haven't delved into too much of our ability as Hopkinton High School to offer a career credential, but it's there if we ever could. Hi, Seth. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Seth, we're just doing IHCD, the dual enrollment. We just okay. started. Yeah. Um, the first recommended change we already had because we did not limit it to 11th and 12th graders. Our policy doesn't 
uh, direct any grade, so any kids eligible, so we're there. We are changing uh, in all our work, uh, guidance to school counselor, um, from guidance counselor to school, that's just a, a term, yep. a, a change. Yep. And then it, um, the legislation now on a uh, dual enrollment also talks about the, uh, that acknowledging a career credential and we don't, Hoptington High School currently doesn't offer a career credential. Um, we do have kids who do through the Concord Regional Technical Center have the opportunity to gain career credentials there. But we could actually, if we had, and I was using the example of, we did entrepreneurship years ago. And one of my dreams was to create a sequence of courses that if you successfully completed, you could get like a badge or recognition on your transcript as an entrepreneurship small business technical writing and, and the sequence and a, did a, a a proposal for a, a shark tank that we had for a couple of years so um i will reach out to jeff daly um and through this development paulus uh, through this work in the development and to see where he is um for a while like our our um, project lead the way you could we could that could be a career credential if you took four project lead the way engineering classes um, and we do offer those. So there is an opportunity for, for, for this to happen in HOP, probably not so much in wood technology because we've limited that, but probably through really it's, right now it's our engineering program. They could, if they took five with a capstone, they could have a notation on their transcript, um, just saying that they have accomplished a, a, an, a, a credential in pre-engineering. Um, but that's it. That was a pretty quick one. Yeah. Well, yeah pretty good. Good shape. That's good. Everybody okay? Yep. yep. So the next one I brought um, is JEC manifestation of hardship. And this is this review was required by legislation prior to the 1920 school year. So this is part of the 1920s. So um, it's interesting. We, uh, we don't um, JEC, our current version, which is very old, is not even on the website. So I found it in the deep annals of scan notebooks that we used to have for policy. So I'm glad we're taking this one up. So um, for some districts, JEC, this policy, Manifestation of Hardship, is very hot. It's, um, it, it's very common. It's, uh, it, sometimes it tends to be very adversarial with parents. So what this does, this allows a, for example, we have a student in our district um, from another district through a manifestation of hardship. So things went in another district, things just really weren't very successful. Um, a lot of social issues, a lot of academic issues. And that and the superintendent reached out and said, they've known about HOP, there was common relationships in Hoptington from that community and said, the best thing we can do, Steve, is a fresh start for the student. Um, what do you think? And um, they uh, came to us. I went to the board. Um, the school interviewed the family candidate. We did our two, you know, we did the process. Mm -hmm. And we agreed to accept the student. And it, and it has been successful. And there is a tuition paid by the sending district. So um, I've been, as you know, I've been here. This is the beginning of my 22nd year. And, and um, we have accepted in my 20, and I was at the high school, as you know, for 10. Well, I was at the high school as principal, we accepted two mm -hmm. on similar type fresh start, right? The importance of fresh start. And as, as superintendent, we've accepted one. And um, we've had one student when I was principal um, who went to another district for a fresh start. So this policy updates the standard, which is really in the procedure, which is really important. It, it's number seven talks about um, the, the compelling reasons and the reasons why and it outlines the process. Um, and this is, as you can see in the policy, this is appealable to the State Board of Ed. So if, if they don't, um, you know, if someone said, I can't come to HOP, I want to go to Bow High. And the board says, no, you're doing so you're very well here. Everything's going here. We're going to do this for you. And they said, no, I want to go to Bow High. Then they um, can go to the state board and the state board hears it and can decide. Okay. And this and is, uh, oh, sorry. 
No, so you need to be approved by both schools. Is that how it works? Like Hop says you can go and Bo says you can come. You got it. And this yeah. is separate from like students with whose educational or behavioral needs are uh, above and beyond what we can provide. Correct. Correct. So this Seems isn't like an social emotional. Place. Right. Okay. This is um, this is a the most common uh, is bullying. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's incredible amount of bullying. They just can't, afraid to come to school. It's not being safe, comfortable, productive in our school. The best thing we need is a fresh start. Now, in, in prior to law changes, it could, like when I was principal, it was uh, the signature of the two superintendents and the board did not have a say. Oh, it, the, uh, the superintendent would inform the board, but the decision was made at the superintendent level. Mm -hmm. And the law has changed now. It has to, it's board approval. Now. Um, but so number that, seven is right now, there are no real standard like that. Is it just a uh, open-ended kind of thing? Correct. It's the, um, yeah, they've done a lot of work on that. And I can, you know, for the next meeting, I can, I just found the very, very old scanned copy of this policy. And mm -hmm. it was actually Matt Karen's work. That's how old it was that he, he scanned them all and did some work on it, but I can put it in the folder for next time if you want to see it. But um, I, to be honest, I didn't mess with this one. Um, this yep. is very much legislative driven. And so the school boards association aligns with legislation and because it is so, it can be so high stakes that I, I didn't feel there was much leeway for me to attack this. One. Yeah. The, the only thing I saw would be, um, under number three, just says, you know, prior to the hearing, the superintendent shall provide the board his or her recommendations regarding the parent guardian's request. Such recommendations may be provided orally at the hearing or in writing at or before the hearing. And I just wonder if we would like to kind of codify that it will always be in writing. Like, I just think that saying we, we have it down in writing is a, a good idea, just to co cover everyone for both the parents guardians and for the school. Do I have the recommended in writing? I will make that change. What's the thought about the ambiguity about at the hearing or before the hearing? Like it seems to me the logical way to do, do this would be at the hearing to begin the hearing, the superintendent would say, here's what I'm recommending. And then you'd proceed. Yeah, I think that is fine, Seth, at the hearing and pr proceed not, yep. Yeah. I become sensitive right to everyone here? thinking secret things go on that actually don't go on. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't know what the we um. So since the law change, we've never had uh, a request uh, oh. under this a uh, 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 exit request. We've had some receipt requests, mm -hmm. but never an exit request. So, um, but well, this the some there is some belief that this is one way to get school choice. You know, and I'm not trying to make a judgment on on the efficacy yeah. of a complaint, but in 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 some areas, I oh, especially if if you're at a school of multiple high schools, right. or, sorry, a district of multiple high schools, then oh, I don't, you know, your your districting sends here, but oh, I don't want to. I'd much rather go to this one. So, and mm -hmm. it, I, I think it happens there, and it happens for us. It's not we don't have a height, you know, another. We don't have a lot of options that are two minutes away. But I'll happily make those changes about um, at the hearing and in writing. Great. Yeah, those are the only. And we can bring this forward next week for a first yep. reading. Are you guys okay with that? Totally. Yep. So um, the the more I don't say I mean both of those are important policies, but the the the, the, the AC non discrimination. So I put in the folder, the current non-discrimination, which is one Henry alluded to, right? That was a PDF. Mm -hmm. That was just a couple of paragraphs. And mm -hmm. so we did revise um, this policy uh, last year, included a, a sexual identity and gender identity. Mm -hmm. Those were the recommendations. And then obviously the state legislation has done some work because now it's, 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 more, it's uh, more comprehensive. So um, to me, and I'll, I'll try to have this for our next meeting. And the, the, the stuff that I like, the stuff that really engages uh, me is the plan, mm -hmm. is the October 15th plan on how to, um, you know, to review and to, and so I was, 
the policy itself is pretty pro forma, but the, the plan that we come together for the district, I think is critical, um, including, um, as it says, meet with community members, but I'd like to do a, re a review of the course of studies. I'd like mm -hmm. to, you know, what courses are we teaching? Um, a survey of students, parents, faculty about what, they, and I'd also would like to, and this is kind of, might seem kind of funky, we've had great success with Donna Dunlop for the family support team and doing community reads. Mm -hmm. This year, I'd like to do a community read about tolerance, about acceptance, about, and I'd like to work with Donna. Donna's really, really good at, at and if we could do as part of our work on taking a look and reflecting on our, on our non-discrimination policies, engage the community in a, a, a community-wide book read. Um, there are some recommended titles, but I think Donna will have some great titles for us. And she and we usually combine, and she has uh, grant money, and we have, if we need to, we have grant money. But I'd like to have that, like every couple of years, engage the community as part of our plan and a thoughtful discussion about discrimination, about tolerance, about understanding differences. Do we this, have any, this mandate, mandate's the wrong word, but do we encourage our social studies curriculum to have this somewhere in it as a component? You know, that's really, what, that's the review I want to do. Um, uh, I don't, you know, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think we're where we should be on, mm -hmm. on how we address in front. I found Henry's letter pretty powerful to me about some, you know, he was fair, right? There were some really good things and there were some things that we can do better on. So I think it's part of the plan is to take a look at our curriculum, our book choices, our, right, our texts, our reads, our film choices. Um, when I was at the, um, you know, when I was at the high school, um, we did, uh, we did lots of work on uh, during, you know, February. I know it might not be trite, but we did February. We did autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. We did um, remember the Titans. We tried to do breakout groups and discussions with kids. So, um, Seth, I don't, I don't have, you know, I think it's part of, I don't have a great enough answer on that question. I think I should have a better answer about how we um, address this systemically through our curriculum. And, and you know, I, I, we, we added um, a course a couple of years ago, I think history of war or something or war, and I always wanted peace, but maybe we should look at something else too. And I know, I know we want to have this motivation, you know, student choice is important, but I think this comes at the, you know, I don't know how much you guys were involved in the fall, last fall, when we had a very significant student issue and it was Facebook, it was, in some respects, it was trial by Facebook a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, it was different. And the, I don't know if you remember, kids came on actually on the Facebook and talked about bullying online. And so yeah. I, I think there is some, some space here for us to do some good work on community-wide discussions about um, this topic. You know, it's interesting, like Henry, one of the things he criticized was a pro-slavery, anti-slavery debate that happened in a class. And I was thinking about that and I thought, well, it all depends on how that's run. How trained is the teacher yep. to drive that discussion in the right direction? It's not wrong to think about, well, why, what were the economic reasons to have slavery? That's important to think about. And then say, well, despite those, it's immoral and how do you balance those things? But you really need trained teachers <laughs> to make sure that doesn't devolve into something bad because it very well could, right? So. You know, and I, I'm, I don't know, do we train our teachers in this way, you know, in, in that area? I'm sure there's more and more training about it, but it would require a really good teacher to make sure that stays on track to be, be a positive experience and not a negative one. Yeah, I think that's absolute uh, insight. And, but I think, I think we do have to um, try to find out our present level of performance Mm -hmm. in both in school and community, and then how do we, we grow, including training. One thing that we do pretty well is we individualize teacher evaluation and teacher professional development plans. And so for so one of the things I had after the, uh, the George Floyd and stuff, I talked, like if, if we had more, I wanted to, to, and maybe I can put this in the plan, is get a group of teachers and, and students and, and administrators together to, to take a look at, at our integration of socioeconomic and learning abilities in our schools and to look where are we, a school in our region went student by student and, and looked at free reduced lunch, looked at um, learning identification 
and try to discern, is there really a heterogeneous or are we really try, you know, are we really pigeonholing kids or kids? And I think that exercise, they found, they actually changed some policies and practices to try and provide a more equitable learning environment for all kids. Um, Cause it's very, it's, it's easy to say that, you know, we provide an equitable education, but what if we don't? Mm -hmm. you know, what if, they want the question I ask a lot, anytime an award comes off my desk, like um, National Honor Society, I will email back and say, how many students identified with learning disability are in National Honor Society? We have a, an award, um, you know, a scholar athlete award, 67 kids get a scholar athlete award. You know, how many kids with identified learning? I, I wanna make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to be recognized and to excel and that a, a good school accommodates for those differences and doesn't, right, doesn't disadvantage students with those differences. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we've got, we've got some good uh, resources around us that we can certainly tap into as well, you know. Um, I also just sort of going back to this policy, I kind of look at it in, in two ways. You know, we've got sort of what Henry was bringing up, which is um, race, um, and I and identity in that sense, and then also you have kind of the concept of gender identity, um, and I don't. And this is just a question, um, but in in doing a little more kind of research on my own, I don't. I also don't know if we want to flesh this out um, specifically in regards to gender identity and how we accommodate students who. Um, you know, might, might be gender nonconforming or trans students um, and kind of put into place some further policy around how, um, you know, how the school handles that. Has that come up at all, Steve? I mean, there was the, I remember, didn't North Carolina have the, a bathroom issue in the school? Yep. Did that come up here? It has. Uh, yep, w without question. Um, we've had bathroom issues, um, a little bit of athletic participation, but not as much as other schools. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, name changes. Well, we spent a lot of time the first time, right, that um, if a student is, changes their identity and, and they change their name, how, how do we handle that as a school, to be honest with you? That was a very interesting learning experience for me as a superintendent. Yeah. But Andrew, I think you're right. And I think you know, it's not, the, the plan doesn't, the, there's the plan presenting by October 15th, and then there's the execution of the plan. So mm -hmm. I think when we start putting this plan together, including surveys, I think we'll do, I think we need to do a present level of performance in a variety of areas. And I think that's an area that, that we need to collect more information on. So I'm with you. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I also think kind of getting, you know, not waiting for an issue to come up, you know, getting, getting the, getting the stuff in place. And I don't know if this would fall though under, you know, I know some schools specifically have a non-discrimination policy for students, um, like regarding gender identity and expression, which is, yeah, we do, I think we have we, a trans. Do we have a, a separate one? Okay. I yeah, guess but I think we're, my... we're required to do that. And that's, I think what we did, we okay. did put a policy in about the name and things like that. But oh, good. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was. I'm like 94% positive. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. But I'm pretty sure yep. it's there. Have we, so there's specific training on teachers who really want to get into these topics. And then there's sort of more general training across the faculty that would be, have we done sort of your, your more basic kind of identity training at a, you know, a half a workshop day that everybody gets? Yeah, we, um, we are required to do bullying training every year. Uh, we do uh, harassment. And so uh, we do, uh, last year we did seven uh, trainings before school. I think, I think we're pretty good actually on regular review of, of how we interact. Um, mm -hmm. But I think instructionally, I think that's an area, Seth, I think how we yeah. work with students on these topics as opposed to make sure it doesn't happen, you know, Cause, more. Because in your ideal school, right? In your ideal school, you're not just making sure everyone is polite and, or, you know, knows not to offend. That's important. But you really want teachers who know how to get into these topics that's where real growth happens well that's where understanding really you know comes from is is hearing thoughtful debate and discussion and and understanding someone else's point of view but that takes risk <laughs> um and that takes training to make sure that the risks you take don't go terribly wrong and that's i mean to me ultimately that's where you want to be but that's really hard i'm with you no i just want to do that <laughs> 
in uh, you know if we were we were really high functioning um i could produce for you our curriculum and all our social studies courses and english courses that could say where we took on some of these you know essential questions and enduring understandings um and and one i think this aligns so deeply with with the caring lens on on how we do this in a caring way um but i'm with you um you're right see i one of the, one of the foundation principles for me in all this work is we are an educational institution Right. Um, we, we need to be comfortable and we need to be persistent in, uh, about teaching and, and, and teaching these, right. which for some are uncomfortable topics. So. Right, because I think the, the easy way to go is to say, well, we're just going to kind of beat this stuff out of our curriculum because it's too controversial and it's easier to avoid it and just, you know, enforce our policies and you get in trouble if you say something wrong. And that's not advancing the ultimate mission to me. You know, which is why, you know, I thought about the pro and anti-slavery and you first really like, well, what was that teacher doing? But actually, I saw what the teacher did because my kid went through that and I thought, all right, this is a thought process <laughs> and it's not wrong, <laughs> but it needs to be done well. Yeah. Um, I also think that we need to recognize that we are a predominantly white community. Yeah. Um, and then we and we have some students of color who I think in in any way that you do kind of like a pro or anti-slavery thing it's going to be difficult um and and so you just really walk that line of of undue harm yeah it's super yeah. hard to do that's i yeah. guess that's the point right it's super hard to do maybe that's not the best exercise but there are different <laughs> exercises that you can do what you don't want is teachers saying i don't want to do any of these exercises right. because i'm taking a risk that i just don't feel like taking yeah. that's bad i think yeah it also and, feels like a place where Rubicon will be great, yeah. you know, because we can put that, you can, I love Rubicon personally, just I, the visual curriculum, the idea of it where right. you can track this stuff through the grades. Yep. Yes. And, and I think, it. you know, I think that some of this is choice, you know, choice driven for when, not all of it, but I think, to develop a course, for, you know, that really takes a look at ourselves or takes a look at race in America, you know, for students who are interested in faculty who are trained. And, and you know, I think, I think there's the general approach, yes, like in, you know, uh, U.S. history, but there's also, I, I, I'd like to have some courses where teachers have some general, ex, uh, you know, real expertise in this field and students are really interested and they can come together and study this topic for a while. You know where I thought it could be built upon is, is so Pam Moskal does do the Holocaust yep. in eighth grade. Um, I know there's curriculum out there that build that idea into a much more broad and general discussion of discrimination, you know, using the Holocaust as a, you know, mm. egregious example. But, you know, I think there's an opportunity there to build that curriculum out further. I don't, I, from what I remember, they did it for a while. It was okay. But my, from my view, it wasn't incredible. Um, and that's an opportunity where I think it can be. Because they're at a good age. Right there, they're at a good age to deal with that. Yeah. What grade is it usually? Eighth? Eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. No, I think that's, uh, no, I, I, I agree with you. I think, there, I think there's opportunity. And I think especially right now, what the country is going through, I think this is a good time to do this work. So an action just for me. Um, I'll, I'll sketch out for our next meeting just a, a little bit more of the plan on, 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 on meeting that requirement. We can relook at the policy. And I'll start discussions with the leadership team too. Just take a look at, at some of this stuff. I will, I'm going to try and have a leadership team meeting next week and we'll go through all these three policies with them. Okay. So when I looked at those policies, some were old ones and some were newer ones. Is that right? Okay. So I, I gave the old, um, right, the old, the old uh, discrimination was a PDF, yeah. and the Word document was the new one. It's the new Much, one, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I don't think I gave the other two, but I did. The Word documents for the other two are updated by the School okay. Boards Association. Okay. I would so, because I and I didn't write them down because I was reading them digitally. But are we consi are we making sure we're consistent in our list of of categories for all these policies? Like I, I thought I noticed too. differences, which we don't so, want to. Um, for, you mean in the, in the non-discrimination stuff? Yeah, in the non-discrimination world, there's our list of protected categories um, the I same. Yeah, and I, they, they give the line, and 
because Henry asked, how come it's not there on a, on, a, on a harassment policy? Yeah. And they actually state that, that this policy, they look at, and we can put it, we can put them on, in both policies and line them up, but they say this one is the, uh, is the larger encompassing. So yeah. a violation of the non-discriminate act supersedes the harassment policy is their mm-hmm. theory. Which but is probably I, legally right, but confusing. Right. So mm-hmm. line, when we go to the plan, why don't I put in the plan to review all policies to make sure all the protected classes align? Yeah. I'll add that to the plan. Because I agree. Yeah. My, cause some people aren't looking at all of them. You know, They're just looking at the ones that they need. Yeah. Right. And if I felt like I was harassed, I might just think I look at the harassment policy. Mm-hmm. And harassment is discrimination. So I certainly understand why they overlap. But the, someone without my training might not. Mm-hmm. And then you yeah. see different categories. I just think it doesn't add any. It it, it doesn't add anything, and it actually hurts because it's confusion. I agree. So I'll put that in the plan to review all policies and make sure they align for for protected classes. And I think that would be a great thing just to even have at kind of at the top of the plan that here are the policies that this kind of plan encompasses because it's going to be we're going to be pulling from a bunch of different things, even if we can link up those um, things yeah. so people can go right right to those policies yeah. and see. You nailed it, Andrea. The policy, uh, a couple of districts are ahead of us, so I have their templates as exactly what they did. Oh, great. <laughs> In the policy, they linked all the applicable policies that you, yeah. so you could put, yeah, and so the end result, that's what you will see. You are mm-hmm. right on. That's exactly okay. what they did. Yep. Great. No, I think that'll be good. Um, what do you need from us? That's it. If it's okay with you, we'll, we'll bring these forward next week. If I can, if not, it'll be the next meeting. I think we're okay on time, but I'll try to get them for our first reading next meeting. I think that should be. Yeah. I think that should be just fine. Yep. And I'll try and get them in the packet on Monday or Tuesday. No, that's it. And then uh, two weeks from now, you want to schedule it? Uh, I thought we did. Didn't we, we put did, that I in think. there? Oh, nice. Already? We did the 23rd. On the 23rd. Yeah. You guys Look are awesome. Us. Boom. Perfect. Perfect. Thank Done. you so much. We're good to go. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. Sorry for being late. Thank you for no coming. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Have a great day. See okay. ya. Bye. Bye.